Dementia could soon overtake heart disease to become Australia's leading cause of death. Over the last decade, deaths from heart disease have been declining, while dementia has risen to make up around 9% of all deaths. In 2023, fewer than 300 deaths separated the two. To explain the figures, CEO of Dementia Australia, Professor Tanya, Tanya Buchanan joins us now. Uh, Professor Buchanan, thanks for your time. Uh, why is it that we're seeing dementia rise as a leading cause of death in Australia? Is it simply that we're living longer? Well, we know that uh, one of the risks that we don't have control over is, is ageing. And while it's important to recognise that dementia isn't a normal or inevitable part of ageing, what we are also seeing is that the population is living longer and so the risks of developing dementia are increasing. But that is also happening alongside an environment in which other chronic conditions like heart disease are seeing really significant investments in and achievements in medical advances and so are now very often curative whilst dementia remains a terminal and degenerative neurological condition. Uh, it's already the leading cause of death for women. Uh, do we know why the prevalence is higher for women? Well, there's probably a number of factors at play and we don't yet know exactly what's driving that. Partly women live longer than men, so that could be one of the factors. And there's ongoing research into the other modifiable risk factors uh, that are likely to be driving increased risk of dementia. The other thing that we know about women as well, of course, is that women also disproportionately take on the care of burden for people who are living with dementia. Uh, how does dementia ultimately take someone's life? Does the brain actually stop sending the required signals to the body or are there usually other factors at play? Well, dementia is a degenerative neurological condition and so what happens is that essentially, as it progresses, areas of the brain essentially die. The neurons in those areas of the brain die. And so eventually people will die from dementia because their brain is so significantly impacted or they'll die as, because of as, as a result of associated conditions where um, they may fall because of their dementia, uh, they may struggle with their breathing or other, other factors like that. So you can die from dementia and with dementia. So what should we be doing as a nation and in aged care in particular to better treat and support people living with dementia? Well, there are around 421,000 Australians currently living with dementia, about 1.6 million Australians involved in their care. We know that over the next 30 years, the number of Australians living with dementia is set to double. And so it's really important that we do two things, and that is address the needs of people living with dementia so that they are able to live their lives to the fullest and at the same time really take a public health approach to thinking about how we might reduce the number of people who are developing dementia in the future. And for people who are living with dementia right now, that means we need to take some really urgent action to address the stigma and lack of understanding around the condition. It also means we need to see support services that are uh, appropriate for people living with dementia. And I think the best way for people to find out how they can access those support services is to call Dementia Australia's National Dementia Support Line on 1800 100 500. Uh, we're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, you mentioned before things like cardiovascular disease and, and other diseases have a lot of funding and a lot of, I guess, medical advancement. Uh, what about dementia? Do you feel like the sector is getting the support that it needs from government in terms of finding treatments, finding cures? Certainly the government have been um, very invested in helping to uh, shore up support services uh, for people living with dementia. We do need to see an uptick in dementia research and we do need to see a, a public health lens applied to dementia. We need to see this as both a challenge for aged care because as people live longer, their risk of dementia does increase. But we also need to see it as a public health challenge. And we know that most Australians don't understand dementia, they are frightened of dementia and don't necessarily want to talk about it either. And so that means that they don't understand what the risk factors are. And it also means that uh, we are missing an opportunity to really promote how you can uh, adjust behaviours and reduce your risk of dementia. Yeah, well, I mean, to that risk, I mean, you mentioned um, some of the risk factors. Obviously, a, a family history, I guess, can, can be one of them. What is something that um, younger people, uh, particularly those with a family history of dementia, can do uh, to try to, I guess, uh, 
you know, hold off dementia and, and reduce its onset? I think the uh, important thing here is to say that dementia is not a normal or inevitable part of getting older. And so there are things that are non-modifiable risk factors, your age, your family history, but they don't mean that you will inevitably develop dementia. And so there are a range of factors that we can look at addressing. We know, for example, that having a, a strong early education is protective against dementia. But when you move into your middle years, really making sure that you're not smoking, that you're not consuming excess alcohol, you're staying physically active and at a healthy weight, looking after your hearing and making sure that you get those checkups to get your cholesterol and your blood sugars checked really regularly are important. Yeah, some good advice. Professor Tanya Buchanan from Dementia Australia, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.